there! Why, me, sir? What night is it? It's rejects night. Ooh. Wow. Lawrence, this uh, assignment was to do a video essay on bias in the media. I'm sorry. I just think that you should make films about things that matter to you. Isaiah, I must say that your character is like, he's very true to himself. Um, you know, he's kind of irritating. He, whatever comes into his head comes out his, his mouth, you know? I mean, and he's very funny. But when you read the script, how did you, how did you read him? Oh, when I read it, I was like, He's just like me, for real. Um, I, uh, no, I really resonated with the character a lot in, in really like all the aspects, including like the kind of negative, hyper narcissistic ones like that. He is me and I am him in a lot of those aspects. Uh, Chandler said about writing the script, like never seen my high school experience kind of portrayed authentically in a, in a coming of age film. Kind of seeing that dynamic of being a person who's like, oh, I'm, kind of a jaded and and like hurt person. And I kind of put up walls around me with the media that I consume. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to be friends with those people anyways. They don't, they don't like the things that I like and so on and so forth, so. Movies are my entire life. I need to watch movies like I need to breathe air. You guys finding everything okay today? Uh, do you work here? No. Chandler, did you know Isaiah before? Did you know this about him? No, he just, um, he kind of came in miraculously after like a Canada-wide casting search, like over 300 actors auditioned for this part. And um, I really wanted someone like super singular and very special to, to be him because, you know, he really is like the author of the movie ultimately. Like he's in every single shot. He has to do so many complex scenes. He has, he never stops talking, you know, yeah. and it had to be somebody that, you know, could, could ride that line of like complexity of kind of making you empathize for someone who, yeah, has a lot of, you know, unlikable characteristics, but ultimately, you know, who you enjoy is this kind of like comic foil and he empathize with. I just don't understand why you won't apply to Canadian universities. Because I don't want to be like a Canadian filmmaker. What about Adam McGuane or David Bro Cronenberg. Cronenberg. Oh Cronenberg. my God. How many advanced copies of Shrek do you think you can sell? Donkey. I thought I got hired here to talk about real cinema. <laughs> Romina, uh, your relationship um, with Lawrence is, uh, there's something else going on. He kind of has a crush on her. Right. And you're trying, you know, you want to keep everything, you know, above board and, and have no interest in the wrong age and everything. So was that kind of challenging to have that dynamic going on between the laughing and the joking and the being in the in the store and little dance parties and stuff? I think that um, for my character's perspective, that's not even on the table. No. I think um, she is a but to very him. You know, I am I, and you know, I don't think that's something because of because of her history and her past. I think she's often just struggling to maintain this essence of authority and capability as a manager of this video store, especially giving this young kid his first gig, you know. Um, knowing that he has these big dreams. And that's one of the themes in the film is dreams, chasing dreams, fallen dreams, broken dreams. So uh, I don't, for me and for Alana, it's, 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 not, uh, it's not even on the table. I think she has her own struggle of just trying to be like a sound adult <laughs> around yeah. this. Day. Yeah, I think yeah, we get that. That was well done. Yeah, it's very well done. So how long have you worked here for? Four years. That's like a really long time. Did you ever want to do anything else? Like have a career? I have a career. Chandler, you know, here you are dealing with these uh, issues. A beautiful script, but um, it's also your story. So tell us a little bit about that and your city. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not uh, wholly autobiographical. You know, there's a lot of fictional elements in there. 
Um, but I did work at a blockbuster in Burlington, Ontario, and you know, I was kind of a dick in high school. So that part is accurate. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, like, I just really hate when Canadian movies try to masquerade as something else, you know, and I think for me, the pleasure <laughs> of a film is always like the specificity of detail and kind of like how personal and you feel like a filmmaker is taking kind of a, a risk, I guess, in what they're sharing about, you know, their experiences or their lives. And, you know, I really felt like I poured myself into both of these characters and I consider themselves in weird way kind of like mirror images of like my 16 year old self and my 35 year old self and it's kind of it's really moving and surreal right now actually to see Isaiah and Romina next to each other on zoom because you know I I feel like both of them embodied such beautifully nuanced like textured performances and really so yeah I feel like you know, as much as it was, I think the writing of it was one stage, but then in the collaboration of it, working with both of them as actors, like it became something else. And I'm so proud of what they brought to the movie. I was wondering what you thought about me coming to New York. I don't know, when I moved to New York, I see myself becoming like a completely different person. So you're just not gonna- Films become fetishes, I think at times, mm. uh, like a, a separate parallel life that people mm. lead. And, um, I'm not sure how great it is uh, as a lifestyle, but maybe Rom- Romania, you could uh, comment on that. I can't, I have no problem with film overtaking me. I have no problem with it whatsoever. And, you know, I, I can watch endless hours of television and film and my husband cannot. He has like a half hour capacity per night. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh, like there's so much, to, there's so much to do. Like, there's so much to watch. And then there's so much to rewatch. I have an obsessive personality. So if I love (laughs) film, I I have to have watched it like a handful of times. And, and, and just for me, I mean, films, it's, it's cliche, but they really shaped me. They, they helped me understand myself. And then becoming an actor is like, it's the flip side of that same coin. I, I, I learn, I learn to appreciate and accept my human experience through the characters that I play. So I have no problem uh, like uh, enmeshing with film. I, I do my media consumption and like my intake of popular culture that has like really kind of taken over and perhaps ruined my whole life. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't think I would have gotten cast in this film if it hadn't, you know what I mean? I mean, it takes one to know one. So uh, I can relate. Um, but I also think, you know, Isaiah has, he's so grounded and like, um, you know, I wouldn't want to make this movie with a Lawrence. <laughs> so, you know, he, he brought a real self maturity and kind of, he's very self-actualized and stuff too. Yeah, and, that's true. Yeah. Mom, I want to go to NYU. We can't afford you to go to NYU because your single mom is a secretary. There have been some reports of emotional instability. Look, I know that you can tell yes. that, that that Lawrence is not like a, a regular kid. I can't. He has serious emotional problems. I like can't believe my job is to make you feel good about yourself. You are very privileged, Lawrence. I don't feel privileged. <laughs> it is so depressing to know that I have to go through the rest of my life as like me. I think you should go to a party. No, no. I like movies.